Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. What if I told you the only thing you need to sharpen your tools is a concrete block from the backyard and a strap of leather? <laughs> Let's dive in. I say this a lot and I'm going to say it a lot more. Sharpening is the beginning skill required for all hand tools. When sharpening disappeared, hand tools disappeared. They are linked. You cannot use hand tools without learning sharpening. There are thousands of ways to sharpen, from diamonds and whetstones to simple sandpaper, or even paste on a piece of glass. And when you first get into it, it can be mind-bogglingly confusing because there are so many different ways and so many people saying, this is the right way to sharpen, and this is the right way to sharpen, and they're all telling you different ways are the right way. The answer is, there is no right way. There is no best way. There's only the way that works for you in your certain circumstance with your particular tools and in your particular budget. And that's why I try to show different methods to do everything. I don't want to be locked into any one particular method. But to do this, I want to take it even farther. In a bit, I'm going to show you how I would sharpen on a simple block of concrete, but I want to show you from others' perspectives and other people as well. So I'm actually getting together with Rex Kruger and Anne of All Trades, and the three of us are going to be doing a live class where we actually show different methods, different techniques. I'm gonna be talking about what are the technical aspects to sharpening and what all is needed for that and actually going into some of the testing and looking at it under a microscope. Rex Kruger is going to be talking about different mediums and different methods and how each one sharpens in different ways. And then Anne is gonna be showing some of the how-to, particularly different methods for different tools. What if you have a hook or a curve or a gouge? How do you sharpen those? So for two hours, the three of us are gonna be diving in deep to see exactly how do you sharpen across the board from different points of views. And we're all gonna be looking at it from very different things. I'm gonna say, well, I really don't do it that way. I do it this way, and Anne's gonna do something different. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you'd like to be a part of that, I'll leave a link to the class down below. And we are actually gonna be offering an after hours, which is just gonna be a hangout with the three of us um, after the class. So if you wanna purchase that as well, um, I'll leave links to those down below. But one of the things I particularly focus on is I don't want people to feel that they have to get the diamond plate. I mean, that's what I generally sharpen with, and there's reason for that. But you don't have to get exactly what the guru has. You can go into your backyard and grab a concrete block, a strap of leather, and a little honing compound, and be right to it. As long as you understand the basics and know what it takes to actually bring that edge together, you can do it with just about anything. A sharp edge occurs when two planes meet, and we're gonna put a bevel on the end of this. So we wanna actually create a sharp edge right here where these two planes come together, this one and this one. So if I grind off material here, and I grind off material here, this should come to an infinitely small point. The problem is, steel is not the incredibly solid thing we think about it. When you get down to the molecular level, it does act a little bit more like a fluid. It likes to move around a bit and warp and bonds move back and forth. So you'll never get an infinitely small edge. Different steels and different tempering will allow you to get to a finer and finer edge but that edge may or may not hold together under the work. It may break off, it may fracture, it may bend. How sharp you can get that edge really just depends on number one, your skill, and number two, the quality of the steel. As long as your sharpening medium is harder than the steel you are sharpening, you can get an edge on it. The different mediums you may use will determine how fast it cuts and how cleanly it cuts and how many scratches and how deep the scratches are. But when it comes down to how fine a point you can get, that really just comes down to the person doing it. So to demonstrate a little bit, I'm bringing in my sharpness tester. Um, I've had this for many years and I've put thousands and thousands and thousands of tests through this, um, probably well over 10,000 of them by now. And it's one that I've gotten to know. This thing measures how much force is applied to it. So it's just a scale, but in here there is a measured filament that will get sliced. So the pressure needed to slice the fiber tells you how sharp it is. In this case, it's about a 150. I'll leave a chart down in the description down below to basically describe what the numbers mean. But in general, the sharpest you can possibly get the best steel in the world is around a 75. Anything under 150 is incredibly sharp, and that's where I want something to be for a smoothing plane. For general work, I'll usually let it get up to around 300 or so, but somewhere between 300 and 400, I'm gonna be sharpening it again. 500 is around the point where the average person thinks a kitchen knife is sharp, and from there they go on up. So if I can get this edge under 200, it will be phenomenal for 90% of the work it needs to do, and if I can get it under 150, it can be incredibly keen and do a lot of work. So if this one is currently around 150, first thing we need to do is dull it. And this is gonna drive a lot of people crazy. We're gonna put tip down on this concrete and go, Yeah, <laughs> he's dull. <laughs> Back here on the test rig, we can bring it in and go. <laughs> 500. 
572. Yeah, he's dull. He's really, really, really dull. I don't even let my scrub plane get that dull. So the question is, can we actually sharpen it up on just this stone? For natural and man-made stones, you do need a liquid in here in order to create a slurry. And that slurry is what actually does the grinding. It's a paste that's moving around on there. It's not actually the aggregate that's grinding it off. It's the slurry on top. That's why diamond stones cut different than natural stones, because these don't create a slurry. It's just the aggregate sticking up on the diamond. Then I'm going to bring it in here, and just like normal, very light pressure. I'm not going to be pushing down on this. I don't want to mash it down yet. I want to look at the scratch pattern on here, and I want to make sure I have scratches going all the edge. And also, I want to make sure I've got a burr on the back. I don't need much of one, I just need a little bit. And I want to make sure that those scratches go all the way across. I've got a little bit more to do on this corner over here. So after a little more work, let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Now, normally I wouldn't touch the back because it would be nice and polished. But in this case, I want to show you I can do both surfaces. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm actually going to do the back as well. And there you can see the scratches left on the back. That's really, that's really heavily scratched up. And because we last did the back, I can now feel the burr, burr on the bevel side. So with that, I'm going to move the stone out of the way, and I'm going to bring in the strop. This is a scrap piece of leather out there. You can use just about any leather you want. You want to go something nice and hard. The harder the leather, the better. I like horse butt, and this is what I actually sell on my website. So if you want to get the exact same stuff I use, you can do that. Um, but it's just a scrap left over leather. Then for the honing compound, I'm using a green chrome oxide. This is my favorite. It's a great balance between aggressive and medium and gives you a nice clean finish. And it's relatively affordable as well. I sell that on my website too. Because the burr is on the bevel side, we're going to start there. And I'm going to be basically polishing up that. I don't need to remove all the scratches. I just want to get a nice polished edge. Normally, I'm only going to do about 10 or so strokes. This time, because I need to get rid of a few more scratches, I'm going to do a few more. And that's all I need. And that's the surface you're left with. It's not incredibly beautiful, and I could polish it a little bit farther, but I don't need anything more than that. I've got a bit of a burr on the back, so let's clean that off. Bring it over the edge, hit the back a few times. We're going to polish the back because we got a few scratches on there. And then we're going to go back and forth to work that burr, one side and then the other. I don't have a huge burr on there, so it's probably not something I want to see, but I'll feel it when it comes off. So let's see how she cuts now. 115. That ain't bad. But the proof is always in the works, so let's try it on this end grain red oak. I'd say that's that's acceptable. Through all the sharpening tests I've done over the years, and there are lots of them. It's proven time and time again that you don't need high quality, expensive things to get an edge. If you go with something cheaper, you need a little bit more skill. But you can spend the money and get jigs and high quality things that more or less guarantee what you're doing. But if you really want to have the art of having some fun, you've got to learn the skill. And if you don't believe me, then go check out Katz Moses Woodworking and Suleman. Uh, they did a really cool test actually trying a bunch of different things and they came to the same conclusion. You don't need high end things. Sometimes the cheapest ones are the best. And I know there's a lot of you who are like, oh, he may have scanned something because it was alive. If you want to see this live, come to the class that Rex, Ann, and I are doing. And I'm going to be doing this live through all of this and that. And I'm also going to be showing it under the microscope so you can actually see what does the edge look like. It's really kind of fascinating. So if you want to see that, there are links to the class down below. And I'm really looking forward to having fun with that. Now, on top of all that, I am very interested to hear your thoughts on this, because I know this is going to start a bunch of arguments, um, but I'm also going to have a lot of people throwing some really cool ideas. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? I'd love to hear those down below. Please put those in the comments down below. That means a lot to me. And I read through all of them and answer as many of them as I can, and it helps out the channel. On top of that, anytime you hit the like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, really, you are helping this out. One share is worth 10 comments, and 10 comments is worth a like. So thank you. If you'd like to help out even farther, there are a whole bunch of names over here. Those are all the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, gorgeous, and amazing people over on Patreon. Because without patrons and members on this channel, we wouldn't exist. Between all of you who hit the thank you button down below, or join, or become a patron on Patreon, honestly, thank you. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So if you want to find out more about that, well, you know what to do down below. I think they'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. I always thought that military drill instructors were hand tool people because you constantly heard them saying, STROP! And give me 20! I do that all the time.